Hallelujah. Come on. Let's stand together this morning. So much in Jesus' name for your presence in this place today. How many came to, to, to see Jesus do something miraculous in your life today? Amen. So listen, we're going to be singing this song. You guys, we've played it several times. Great. It's more than a song, it's an anthem. It's a declaration of what God can do in our lives. Amen. And so as we're singing this, you need to sing it like an anthem and not sing it like you're just singing a song that you're just hearing on the radio. Amen. So let's do that today. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures of vain are never enough. Oh, but you came along and put me back together in every desire. Now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Yeah Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again
praise this morning, amen. Come on, I want you to praise him like you mean it this morning. He is awesome. He is awesome. Father, we just thank you so much, God, that you are here, that you're present. All of his promises, the word of God declares are yes and amen. So I don't know what you're walking through today, but can I just encourage you that our God is here. Let's just worship him today. And I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now and you won't fail me now in the waiting the same god who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes i will lift you high in the never fails, will not fail me now, come on, you won't fail me now, it's in the waiting, the same God who's never late, is working all things out, you're working all things Him this morning. 
For I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against, yes, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against, oh, yeah. I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I Thank you, Lord. We magnify you. I love you, Lord. We're going to wait. My wife has a word this morning. You know, something that the Lord just laid on my heart. There's in Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, it says, Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be cleansed. And you know, a lot of times, in times of struggle, whatever we're facing, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a financial need, whether it's an issue in your marriage or your family or something to do with your job, that we tend to look at our situation we tend to look at God, are you willing, instead of knowing that God said, I am willing. And we can't praise our way to convince him of that answer, but we can praise and we can press through till we touch the heart of God and God changes our heart and changes our mindset and changes our eyes and changes what we're seeing from us looking at it saying, God, are you willing to saying, God, I know that you're willing. I know that your promises are yes and amen. I know that you say, yes, I will. But it's up to us to choose to say, yes, I will choose to praise you in the lowest valley. I will choose to praise you when I can't see the answer. I will choose to praise you when I can't see what you're doing, where you're going, or where you're taking me. But God is always faithful. He is always true to his promises. He is always yes and amen. And we need to press in and touch the hem of his garment, touch his heart today and believe that God is in our midst, that God is moving, and that God is going to do what he promised to you and that he will be faithful in the process. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, you can praise him this morning. Somebody just needs to respond to that today in Jesus' name. If that's you this morning, just stretch your hands towards heaven. And let's just begin to encounter Jesus in this room this morning. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, sing that with me. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. 
with every breath that I am able, as I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. Of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running down, it's running down to me. Come on. Your All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God Come on, how many know he's been good this morning, amen? Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Come on, sing it again now. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Come on, let's praise Him in this house one more time this morning, amen he is worthy, church. Amen. Come on, let's just sing that bridge one more time. I'm just feeling it this morning. God is chasing some of you today. Today he wants to demonstrate his goodness to you. Amen. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on, one more time. Let's give him about 15 seconds of our best praise this morning. Amen. He is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Well, listen, do not be seated today. 
till you turn around, wave at some folks, welcome them to the house of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. How many were feeling the presence of God this morning in this place? Amen. The, uh, before we invite our testimony I got from Brother Dan today, their grow group on Friday night. Uh, power of God, presence of God in that grow group had a lady got filled with So uh, we're just excited. Now, how many know that's what those grow groups are about? It's about growing in our faith, and Lord, and sometimes we need some of those safe places where we can experience the presence of God in ways we never have before. And so I just want to thank you guys for hosting a group, and thank you for what God is doing, and letting the Holy Spirit lead, amen, in that grow group and growing. I may know today is Mission Sunday, amen. We are, that missions is one of the four pillars of our church. We've built it on the idea that we need to reach the whole world with the gospel, not just in Owensville, but around the world. And so at least four to six times a year, we try to have a missions emphasis in our church to remind people, remind you, but also remind those that are watching from home now how important it is to support missions. And so... Uh, we're at the end of the day or at the end of the service, our elder or our deacons will be in the back. On your way out, they'll have the missions baskets you can put your offering in. But you have a whole service to write those big $1,000 checks to bless our missionary with. Amen. I'm pretty sure he'd cash them uh, if he gets them. So whatever God lays on your heart to do, people have already been putting money in there on their way in today. And, I mean, those of you that put money on the way in, God bless you. That's by faith. You've not even heard him preach yet. You don't know if he's any good or not. So that's by faith. But he's going to do awesome today. And so I just want you to give me your attention. Listen, what just be, and let me just say this. Simply because we have a missionary doesn't mean that this is just going to be an educational service. This is, the presence of God is in this room. He's going to bring the word. But, with the, but it, and what you see today is what they're going to experience on the other side of the ocean. And so we want to make sure we give them our full attention. We want, to, we want our hearts to be engaged today in Jesus' name to the living word that's about to take place. So I just want you to make the Holdeman family welcome as they come this morning to share. You want to come up here? I have you come onto the platform because we got some people in the balcony today and they can't see you from the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, well, hello. We are the Holdemans, and we are so happy to be here. Thank you for having us, Pastor. Your church is beautiful. Um, it is so nice to see some familiar faces. Pastor Fole, so great to see you. Um, longtime family friend and pastor. Um, my name is Amy, and the kids are going to introduce themselves in a minute and tell you where we're going if you don't know already. Um, <laughs> but it just, just a spoiler alert, it is way cuter when somebody else says it, um, so, than when I say it. So, um, I'm just gonna brag on your pastor's wife for a minute, if I can, if you'll let me, because you guys are blessed. I don't know if you know that or not, but you're blessed, am I right? Um, Tandy, what, do you guys call her sister? Are you old school? Are you, <laughs> First lady, first lady, <laughs> Tandy. She is amazing. I have never known, besides my mother-in-law, of course. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> she is amazing. I have never known a pastor's wife that is so loving on people, how she makes your, the goodies for the cancer patients and how she loves kids. You go, she goes to kids camp and she doesn't just make an appearance and leave. 
she stays. And let me tell you, it's not the Hampton. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> She stays there, and I'm like, like I don't even stay there. <laughs> I go stay at my mom's, and I'm like, wait, you sleep here? <laughs> and she, I mean, it's like that says a lot about a person and how she loves on the kids, and it's just, it says a lot about her and how she loves people and kids. And my husband will tell you more later, but we love kids. I mean, we have four. And, like, it's our ministry. It's what we do. And we love kids. And when somebody, like a pastor's wife, loves kids, it, it says a lot. And I don't know if you know this or not, but Jesus loves kids. He loved them. And he said, no, don't send them away. Bring them here. And that's what we're, that's what we do. So, this is, tell them your name. Paxton. Paxton. Tell them how old you are. Four. And tell them where we're going. South Africa. There we go. I told you. <laughs> hi, hi, my name's Parker. I'm seven years old, and I will first be here. If I ride on a ring to put down, if I say it on a fall side of the sea, you will never hear me by me. My hand will hold me for pounds 100, Hi, I'm Cindy. I'm 11 years old. My verse for you is Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard a voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. Hi, my name is Grant, and I'm 12 years old. And I don't have a verse, but I have a story to tell you of how I got involved with missions. Um, so I grew up going to kids camp, and my first year going, I got to I was received with the Holy Spirit, and I was really happy, and then I went for my second year, and I was called into ministry, ministry. and I didn't know what, I, what it was going to be yet. Then my third year going, I was called to be a missionary, not knowing two years later I was going to be a missionary with my family, so I just thought that'd be good to share with you guys. I have them come up first um, because you have to stare at this ugly face the whole rest of the time. I figured it would be easier to look at that than, than this the whole entire time. Uh, I'm Zach, and uh, it's an honor you. Um, what we get to do is, uh, is an amazing, amazing opportunity in South Africa. And the reason that we get the opportunity is because amazing churches like you who partner with us. And to send us to Cape Town. Um, they say in 10 to 15 years, um, Africa, 70% of the population of Africa will be urbanized. Meaning people are leaving what we'd call the bush or the villages, their homes, and they're going on a search for happiness. And they're leaving these areas and they're moving to these big cities. And the Simmons of God has started an initiative called Urban Tribes. And I'm sure you've heard of Urban Tribes because one of the missionaries that you support, Scott and Aaron Pongratz, are going to be our team leaders. And so we are, India, two Indiana missionaries are going to Cape Town to plant a church. Not just to have a church there, but to have a, a, a place that is racially reconciling for everybody. And when they're searching for something... Um, we read this in Ecclesiastes, there's a man that goes on a search, and he looks for knowledge, and he looks for the party life, and, and he tries to find happiness, but he only finds happiness in God. Do I, can I tell you this day, today, that there's people in Africa that are searching, and they don't know what they're searching for, but we get to plant a church in Cape Town, and we get to introduce them to Jesus. The only thing that will ever fill the void in people's life is Jesus. And so with your partnership, we get to go be part of Urban Tribes. And so thank you for that. Pastors, um, I've been a preacher a lot longer than I've been a missionary. Uh, in just a few weeks, I'm going to celebrate my 17th year of full-time ministry, and I'm 37. So all my adult life, I've been a, a pastor, and uh, God called us. 
um, in 2019, and I was mad at him. <laughs> it's like, you're crazy. Come on. Uh, but we said yes. Like Sydney said, who will go for me? We said, here we are. Send us. And as we begin to um, pray about itineration and uh, the word that God would have for churches, I believe that God put a divine scripture in my heart for this season, and I would have no idea, we'd have no idea at the beginning of this year what our country would go through. Um, but in January, God gave me this verse to share with churches, and you can find it in Psalms chapter 46, starting with verse number one. God is a refuge and strength in every Can I just drop the microphone and we can close the doors and church can be over because I'm telling you today that our God that we serve, I'm a holler back preacher so I needed some help this morning, our God that we serve is an ever present help in times of trouble. In the lowest valley, guess who's there? God. On the mountaintop, guess who's there? God. Our God that we serve is an ever present help in times of trouble. Though the earth give way, though the mountains crumble, though the, the, the mountains fall into the sea, I'm here to tell you today, whatever you're going through, our God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. When we have to wear masks in Walmart, our God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Come on. We could preach all morning on that one. When I'm coaching football on the football field and I got to wear a mask and gloves, my God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. When that knucklehead cuts you off on the highway, my God is ever-present help in time of trouble. When you open up the bill and you say, my God, how am I going to pay this? He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. When the doctor calls you and says you need to come in, God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. And I believe today there's people in this room who you are in trouble. Come on, let's be honest. We're church. Let's be transparent. There's some of us, we're going through hell this week. I want, I'm here on divine appointment to remind you that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's an ever-present help. In times of trouble. And I believe today you can leave this place different and changed. As your pastor said, the presence of God is here. And I would be, I would do an injustice if I would just talk about missions. Because I believe I'm on specific assignment today to bring you a word. Today's message is entitled, Trophies and Tragedies. Let's pray. God, I come to you right now, and I pray, pray that you continue to be here with us. God, I pray that you will, in your divine favor, show mercy to us today and help us in the tragedies of our life. God, I thank you that you can help us be hearers of your word. And not just hearers, but God, may we do something with it today. In your son's name we pray. And everyone said, amen. God is a refuge. Therefore, mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We will not fear because our God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Our God is a refuge and our strength. Today, I believe there's people in this room who are sitting in tragedies. And we think of tragedies at that devastating moment that things happen around us. I mean, I'm sure we could go around and we could share the mic today and all of us could share tragedies that we've gone through. But I believe you're sitting here today, some of us sitting here today, and the tragedy is not what's happening around us, but it's what's happening in us right here. I believe there's 
There's people, great people, who are dealing with tragic thoughts today, and they don't know what they're going to do. And I'm here to tell you today that our God is the ever-present help in times of trouble. And today I want to deal with three tragic thoughts that we live with and we work, we have to work through. And these three, these three things that happen in our mind that we need to take control of. The enemy is no fool. And he knows how to get you off the path and he knows what's going to distract you. I believe many of us, he starts right here. And he starts distracting us in our minds. And so I want to tell a story and kind of weave this whole tragedy throughout this story. And I want to tell the story about our guy named Parker. You met him, that handsome guy who did that amazing verse. Um, that's, look how cute he is. He's so handsome. Um, he's seven. But don't let that face fool you, church. That's just the facade. There's a, a Greek word that best describes Parker, and that Greek word is crazy. Uh, I got some other pictures I want to show Parker today, of Parker. Do I need to say more? But let me just, let me just real quickly. Um, he was eating uh, SpaghettiOs, and he's like, hey, I'm wearing a white t-shirt. I don't want to get SpaghettiOs on my shirt, so I'll put a napkin in his shirt. But if you can see down there at the bottom of his shirt is all the spaghettios and his napkin is clean. Uh, and then he created a character out of a Mr. Incredible outfit, a Captain America cape, a shark hat, and a detective hat. That's his imagination. And just look at that picture with the spoon in his mouth. Does that not, that Greek word, crazy, is right there in his eyes. And uh, then... We heard a ruckus going, that's another great Greek word, ruckus, um, going on in his uh, bedroom. And we walked in there, and he, you've seen those little, like, personal trampolines you have in the house. And, and so we heard this ruckus going on, and it was so loud that we walked in, and Parker is jumping on his trampoline with that wolf hat. And we strategically cropped that picture on purpose because he was wearing a wolf hat. He's crazy. And so after watching, after watching, he loves this part of the stories. Uh, after watching his older brother and sister, he decided that, hey, you know what, I want to play basketball. And so he joined a basketball team. And um, this is his statistics, um, his basketball card. He's 4'1", 50 pounds, and zero points. Um, we blame the coaching staff. Uh, which was me. <laughs> um, come to find out, a lot of you know my dad. Who knows my, my dad? Let me see. Yeah. He coached basketball for many years. Um, he fired me as his basketball coach, and he took over for me. I'm pretty sure that's hard for you to believe. Uh, but um, so we realized in the season that Parker maybe should do other things in life and not play basketball. He wasn't very good. I, I asked Parker, I asked him one time, I said, Parker, why do you like basketball so much? And this is his quote, I love basketball, I get a snack after every game. <laughs> Come on, who can be mad at that? Man after my own heart, got a Gatorade and popcorn. I got five kernels of popcorn because it was my, I mean, he had to pay me something for being a coach, right? And so... Uh, the, the season ended, and he realized that he was going to get a trophy. And so the night came, and they called his name up, and he went up to the stage and got his trophy, and he was so excited. He was so happy. His, his smile grew as the night went on. And, like, you know, if you hold on to something, your knuckles turn white. His little knuckles were white. And I said, Parker, let me, let me have that trophy. He, no, no, it's my trophy. And as we walked out of that gymnasium that night, the, the doors swing open, he kind of stopped before he walked out, and he looked around. It's like he's almost looking for ESPN to do a 30 by 30 outside the lines interview, one-on-one, -on -one, the first ever with Parker. So they weren't there. So what he did, he threw his trophy in the air as he walked out of the gym. 
and he was proud of his trophy. Now, remember, he didn't score any points, but he was proud. I said, what are you doing? He goes, this is my trophy, and I deserve it. And that's the first tragedy I want to talk about, the tragic thought that we deserve it. Look who I am. I deserve his grace. I deserve God's love. Look at all the things I've done. Look at all the Sunday school teachers, uh, classes I've taught. Look at all the people I've brought to church. Look at all these good things I've done. I deserve his love. I deserve his grace. That's a tragedy. It's a lie that you're telling yourself. You don't deserve his love. You don't deserve his grace. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 2.8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. So many of us, we try to take credit on our own. Look what I've done. Look at this. Look at my, look at my masterpiece that I've created. But you're, it's a tragedy. I know this isn't a popular thing to talk about right now, but I'm here to tell you you're lying to yourself. What we do deserve is hell. What we do deserve is death. But because of his grace in our life, the unmerited favor for his kids. Come on, somebody. He loved you anyways, despite your sin, despite your shortcomings. He chose you, and he loves you anyways. And he cares about you. And he loves you. Grace is favor, un, unmerited favor. Salvation by grace is therefore God's unmerited favor, his goodness towards those who have no claim on it nor reason to expect it, divine favor. Romans 5, 6, when we are utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time. I'm so thankful that his timing's perfect, that he came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we we're still sinners. Come on, are we thankful for his grace? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My friend, it's not the works that you do that will get you to heaven. It's his grace. It's his grace. And I don't know about you, but maybe some of you are in this place today and you need a little bit more extra grace. Maybe you've done some things this week and you need God to show you grace. It's not a coincidence or accident that we're both here today. But maybe today you can leave knowing that it's His grace. And so... Back to the story of Parker. He was walking with his trophy. He's like, look what I've got. And you saw the picture with him in the spoon? That crazy in his eye? We saw that in that moment. And we're like, okay, something's about to go down. And he's like, you know what? More people need to see my trophy. More people need to see that I got this. And so he stepped up on the curb. And in slow motion, he tripped, and he fell. Why are you laughing already, Grant? So mean. He tripped and he fell and broke his trophy right in half. Yeah. That was not the response that Parker got from me or Grant. It wasn't like, oh, we kind of laughed and chuckled because it only happened to Parker. And he picked up his trophy in two hands now, and he looked and said, Daddy, my trophy. I've already broken it. I haven't made it to the car. I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to me in that moment. He said, as a dad, as a pastor, you're there for when people are broken. They know where to go, and you can get them to the Father. And that's my second tragedy today I will talk about, is that you're too broken. The lie you tell yourself, I'm too broken for God to love me. I'm in too many pieces for God to use me. Look at my life. My life's a mess. Why would God want to do anything with me? I'm here to tell you today that's a lie from the enemy. He loves you. You can't be too broken 
Zephaniah says, uh, chapter 3, verse 17, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I'm here to tell you today, we all have issues. We all have things that we deal with. And sometimes those burdens feel way too heavy to carry. We are imperfect people in a broken world, but that does not mean you are unloved. Come on, I need, somebody needs to hear that this morning. We are imperfect people in a broken world, but that does not mean you are unloved. God sees us in our brokenness and loves us anyways. Not only does God love us despite our brokenness, but he heals us in the midst of our brokenness. I'm here to tell you today, it's a lie from the enemy that you're too broken for God to use. He loves you. And he cares about you. As a matter of fact, Psalms 147.3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Psalms 34.18, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those whose spirits are crushed. I don't know what you've gone through this week. I don't know what you're going through this today. Is that if you're broken, God is here to heal you and to mend you and to put all the pieces back together. And I noticed that night, Parker, he frantically, he got up, he frantically put that try to put his trophy back together it's like a bad dream what happened i can't believe this just happened you've been there something's happened and you're like I, I can't believe i just got this news from the doctor i can't believe that that they just told me this and and, and you're frantically trying to put this back together and i realized in that moment there's the third tragedy is that i can do it by myself i can fix this on my own i can fix this by myself i don't need anybody I, I can get the super glue. I can, and, and what I realized is Parker real frantically tried to put the trophy back together, and he wasn't successful. And what he did was he turned it over to the Father. He said, Dad, I can't fix it. Can you help? I'm here to tell you today, stop trying to fix it on your own. You're making a bigger mess of it. And I heard my dad say this, and he probably stole it from, from Pastor Full, so I'll give Pastor Full the credit. If you could fix it, on your own, why haven't you fixed it? If you can do it by yourself, then why aren't you doing it? You can't fix it by yourself. You can't put the pieces back together on your own. You need somebody, and his name is Jesus, and he's here today. He's here to put all the pieces back together, and he knows how to do it. And he knows how to do it better than you and way better than me. We just try to do it on our own. And we make a bigger mess of it. Melvin Hodges, a world-renowned, a Son of God missionary who is in Latin America and is a missions executive and an author, he wrote a book of, called A Theology of Church and Its Mission. And in it, he talks about the word church as a translation of the Greek word ecclesia, which means the called out or the summoned. I told you earlier, the enemy is no fool. And he knows when to hit our country, when the church has to be quarantined, when the church has to be shut in, and things go awry. And there's, there's craziness that runs our streets. But it's time for the church to be summoned, to be called out, not to be by ourselves, but to be brothers and sisters together. And to fight against the enemy. And I'm here to tell you today that you can't do it by yourself. That's why I'm thankful for the church. That's why we're planting a church in Cape Town. Because people can't do it by themselves. They need brothers and sisters who believe in them. Who believe in God and that we can work together. It's called accountability and discipleship. And so I talked about three tragedies today. Tragedies that happen in our mind, that I deserve it, that I'm too broken for God to love me, that I can do it 
by myself. And so if you remember, the title of my message is called Trophies and Tragedies. And you're like, Zach, where's the trophy at today? You've only talked about the tragedies. Well, I'm so glad you asked me. The trophy is you. You are his trophy. You are his masterpiece. I mean, we had some rough Saturday basketball games watching Parker. As a matter of fact, one time he shot the basketball, missed everything except for the back of the head of one of his teammates. But can I tell you something? Guess what was on mama's shirt? This big old picture of his big old face. And she was so proud of that was his, that was her boy. And I'm here to tell you today that you are his masterpiece. You are not a button, but he would have your picture on his chest and say, that's my kid, and I love him. I don't care what they're going through. I don't care what the world's doing to them. I love them, and they're mine, and they belong to me. I'm here to tell you today that you're his trophy. You are his trophy. You're not too broken. You're not alone. But he cares about you and he loves you. And you're his trophy. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. Isaiah 43, but now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. You're his trophy. And he loves you. And he cares about you deeply. He's proud of you. I don't know what you came in this building today with. But I know today that he's here. And he wants to put the pieces back together. And he calls you his own. Would everyone close your eyes and bow your head? And no one looking around today. God, I thank you for this moment. Holy Spirit, begin to speak to our hearts. May we listen. The word says to examine yourself. And so I ask right now that you just do that. What is it in your life that you need some extra grace? What are the things that you're going through that you need God to give you grace? Maybe you're here today and you feel so broken. And maybe you need God to heal you physically, mentally, or emotionally. You're here today and you say, Zach, I, I'm going through some things. I need, I need grace in my life, the unmerited favor from God. I need that right now. Would you raise your hand and let me see? No one looking around, just me and you. And Let me see. Who raised? Who is it? Yeah, I appreciate that hand. I appreciate that one. Yeah, who else? You need some grace. You're going through some things and you need grace. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. God, you see every hand that was raised in this moment. I pray, God, that you show them the unmerited favor, the unmerited love. God, the, that grace in the situations that they're going through right now. 
and who's here today, you say, Zach, I'm going through some things that I feel broken. There's some situations that are way too big for me, and, and I need God to, to help me. I need him to put some pieces back together. Let me see your hand right now. Who is it? You feel broken today. Yeah, I see it there. I see your hand there. Who else is it? Come on. Can you all just stand with me today? And let's just pray. Just pray. Come on, will you help? Son, you, you, you love us and that you're ever present help in times of trouble. So God, right now, every hand that was raised for those who need grace, for those who are feel broken, God, I pray right now that you heal them, that you put all the pieces back together. God, that you mend the brokenness today. Come on, there's some of you right now. I just want you to raise your hand right now and say, God, it's me. I need you to put some pieces back together and surrender those things. Come on. God, right now, put them back together. Put the pieces back together. We love you. We praise you. God, do what only you can do. God, when you walk in the room, things change. And so, God, we know that you're here, and so you're changing things right now. And God, I love what we sang this morning, that you are turning graves into gardens. You're turning bones into warriors. Seas into highways. And God, do it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Do what only you can do, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, sing that again. And all my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sing it again, come on. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, let's give him some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome God, amen. I may think that uh, Parker did an awesome job today preaching that message. Zach did all right too, amen. 
We are so thankful today. We're going to pray over the offering we're about to receive. So listen on your way out. Our deacons, our, our tithe offering, our tithe is up front. All of you who are part of our church family know where to bring your tithe. But this special offering for the Holdeman family, you can drop in our baskets on the way out. And our, uh, our ushers and our bodyguards and our strong men will be at the door. I'm just teasing you. Uh, just give as your heart leads you to give this morning. Father, thank you for the word today. Father, for those tragic thoughts that so often that we buy into. But, Lord, we know, we learn today that we are your trophy. And, Lord, that we are your masterpiece. God, you are the craftsman. And, Lord, you're molding and shaping us. And so, Father, we just submit those thoughts to you today. And, Lord, we hear your voice of who we truly are in Christ. Father, I thank you, God, for this precious family and all that they do. And, God, that you're bringing them, Father, just not financially to the place to be released to go, but you're bringing them emotionally and spiritually to a place of readiness, God, to be released into the ministry that you've called them to. Father, we are so thankful not just to be partners with them in Christ, but, God, to be friends. And so we ask your blessing over them today. Bless the word. Bless the tithe that comes in, and bless the special offering for our friends. Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name, and the church declares, amen. Listen, we encourage you, if you want to stick around, our discipleship, discipleship hour begins at 10 o'clock. And then uh, also prayer meeting tonight at 6 o'clock here at the church. If you need.